Welcome to Burn Unit, starring the amazing Jonathan. Do you know how you get a fat girl in bed with you? Piece of cake. It's showtime! Burn Unit with your host, the amazing Jonathan. Hello, welcome to Burn Unit, starring the amazing Jonathan, and we're sponsored this week by Morphine Patches. We'll be right back with Alan Bursky. Welcome to Burn Unit. We're sitting here with our guest, Alan Bursky. Oh, I thought it was Mickey Rooney this. No, Mickey Rooney's dead. No, he's not. Oh, uh, that no, was gonna happen. Shit. Oh, man, no. when I say someone's dead, they're dead. Okay. It happens. No, it happens he, he did. He killed. He killed I, uh, I predict, Charles uh, Nelson Riley. I predicted he killed Charles Nelson Riley. I predicted a guy motorcycle on a motorcycle who drove past us. I said that guy's gonna be dead in five yeah. minutes. Sure enough, rush hour traffic starts and there's an ambulance. The guy's dead. So you're you're fine. I don't see you dead. Okay, thanks. But so, I uh, wouldn't want to be Mickey Rooney right now. Yeah, Mickey Rooney's oh. dead. So go. So Alan's a legendary comic. And we're we're gonna <laughs> sit and talk with him for. The saying is that every comic in the entire world has an Alan Bursky story. Uh, they do? They do. Oh. You've heard that before. I have. Yeah. Well, can I tell my, I told you the story that kind of sums up Alan. Your friend, we have a mutual friend, Patrick Murray, told me this story. Patrick Murray's a great ventriloquist. And you is invited there such a him. thing? What's that? Is there such a thing? Yeah, he is. <laughs> um, and uh, you invited him, as I heard the story, to the Magic Castle to have dinner with a friend. And that friend was Drew Carey. And when you left to use the restroom, Patrick said, Drew, how did you get hooked up with Alan Bursky? And Drew Carey said, Patrick, sooner or later, we all get hooked up with Alan Bursky. Yeah. Everybody gets hooked up with Alan Bursky. Well, sooner or yeah. later, I guess. He has a story. You, I thought, let I me throw you that, throw. but I remember taking Patrick Murray to Rick Machina's house for a, a Super Bowl. Magic Castle. Oh, you name a celebrity, and Alan will have a story about something he did with that celebrity, which is weird. Now, that celebrity first, will have a story about Alan, which yeah, is totally different. Yeah, let's, let's, explain who Alan, <laughs> let's explain who Alan is. Legendary. I mean, Alan Bursky, if you don't know who he is, uh, if you're not a comic... And your uh, regular Joe Blow, then he is uh, the youngest comic ever to appear on The Tonight Show. With Johnny Carson. With Johnny Carson. And uh, he was 18 years old at the time. Right. And he got The Tonight Show. He appeared on the, he was a, a regular family. on The Partridge Family. <laughs> um, his own sitcom. He had his own like sitcom. Like based dead. on the musical. Boy, it, how to it, Succeed. It, how to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying was a great Broadway musical with Robert Morris. And he took gave, over the role gave, for the sitcom. How many episodes did that last? <laughs> And, not, not many. <laughs> okay. He's appeared on the Mike Douglas show, and most legendary Wait, of all, of... most legendary oh, of all, yeah. he was there when Freddie Prinze shot himself. I was not! Well, he was his roommate, and he was there. Ugh. Weren't you there? No. I would, I, no. I, when he actually shot himself? Yeah. No. His business manager, his accountant, his business manager was sitting in front of him in the hotel. When were you there? I got to the hospital when he was already in surgery. But were you there earlier before he did that? No, no. That, you were roommates with him. Yeah, but that was, yes. I was now, why did Freddie Prince need a roommate at that time? He was Chico. He, for he, he was a roommate Christ. at that time, was he? No. Okay. I feel like I'm in a crossfire here. <laughs> I was just like, ah. No, when Freddie... We love you, Alan. Okay, we want to know your life. We're not, we're not blaming okay. you for I did, killing the, Freddie the young, Prince. The youngest guys who ever do stand-up on Tonight Show, I was... Uh, 18 years old for three weeks. Then comes You're Byron. 18 I'm, years old for three weeks. Well, I mean, it was three weeks <laughs> past my 18th birthday. Then Byron Allen, who now claims he was 17 or whatever. Byron was 18, but for a number of months. I like that. Then comes Freddie Prince Sr., who was 19. Now, I had done the show, Tonight Show almost oh, eight or nine months before Freddie did his first Tonight Show. So we became friends because we were. So Freddie only... killed himself because he found out that you were the youngest comic on the Tonight Show? Bruce, you're interrupting the story. Why does your little horse have leg braces on? Oh, he, uh, he broke his leg. Oh, polio. Oh, polio. You're right, <laughs> So. Don't interrupt, Tal. Let's talk when about When we were just working comics and he came out here to actually audition to a screen test for Chico and the Man, we became roommates. And then when, you know, before the show uh, didn't go on for another year, so we were roommates. Then when the show finally started to go on, he went and got an apartment around the corner. 
you know. And, and did he, he already have Freddie Prince? He, he must have had Freddie Prince Jr. at that point. Was was the little baby Freddie yeah, Prince Jr.? Yeah, he had Jr. a baby. Yeah, no, baby. Fr- the Freddie, Freddie. Before he died, he had a baby. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. yeah. But did you know Freddie Prince Jr. when he was a baby then? Because yeah, he used to lines. Fre- <laughs> Freddie Jr. was 10 months old when, when Freddie died. Okay, so Freddie died January 77. Freddie Jr. was just an infant. So, there. Anyway, so we were... That proves it. Yep. But there was also always the legend of the gun, too. Uh, What's about the gun? Well, you told me it. Well, I don't even know it. No, I did not give... I, oh, did God. you give Freddie the gun? No! Oh. What is that? But I'm just telling you... Well, no, we're no. here to straighten out no. these rumors. No, yeah. these are, that's what people have always... Uh, that's God, what this has done. been like 30-something years. He's been well, dead 37 years already. But his, his legend will never die. Okay. Looking the, good. No. Looking good. Freddie... Freddie came over. He was great, though. I Freddie like, I came. Like you know, people forget, you know, in 1975, 76, the biggest stars in the world were Freddie Prince, Chico and the Man, Henry Winkler, the Fonz, and John Travolta as, uh, you know, Vinnie Barbarino. You couldn't be a bigger star. And Alan Bursky from How to Succeed yeah, in Business. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you couldn't be a bigger star. Bigger star. No, that no, was and, huge. News. I remember they broke into the news when Freddie Prince went to the hospital. I was a kid. I remember it vividly when there's a news break that Freddie well, Prince was, you know. Anyway, the point was, is. As you were there, you sold them coke, and you gave them oh, guns. That's my point. So we, okay. let's, let's move on. All right. All right, so what were we talking about? We are talking Killing about Freddie Prince. Prince. Oh. So, so uh, Jesus how long did you know him for? Well, you know yeah, what? You, know what? You, don't, you don't need me here, really. You That's just, what we were saying before you got here. <laughs> that that is so weird. You know, it's so funny, you gosh. You know, you know, I don't know, you know. So anyway. All right, let's, let's talk more about you. Where were you when Freddie Prince? <laughs> <laughs> actually, I was. Where I, were you when Freddie Prince? Actually, the last time I saw him alive, yeah, I was pulling up to the Tonight Show with Marty Klein, who was the president of APA, because that was the first night Steve Martin was hosting the Tonight Show, the guest host, and Marty was his agent, my agent, and we're like you know the, one of the owners of APA. As I pulled up with Marty Klein, Freddie was pulling out from NBC. And he was ranting and raving and screaming about something. And I said to him, Steve Martin's hosting the Tonight Show for the first time. Then we're all going out to dinner. So Freddie said, all right, call me when you, when you get home. He said, I'm not hungry. So that was, I got home around 1130. I called him. He was ranting. He said, this was the first time in a number of years. I hadn't seen him for about 10 days because he went to Jimmy Carter's inauguration. So I said to him, how was the inauguration? And he said, I thought he said, I got a lot of new Coke. He said, I got a lot of new hope or something. I thought he said new Coke. And I said to him, what's new Coke? I thought there was a new drug or something like that. <laughs> and he starts yelling at me on the phone. Yeah, I don't do cocaine anymore. In the meantime, he was doing three grams of Coke a day and 10 quaaludes a day. What a pussy. Three grams a day? Well, you know, nobody knew what, you know, cocaine psychosis was in those days. And this was before Instagram. What's Instagram mean? What's that? Well, he's doing three grams a day, so. Oh, God, we'll skip right over that one. No, but in those days, you know, this was, you know, Freddie died January 77. So, you know, those days, everybody... Everybody you know, did coke. Yeah, and every, I mean... It wasn't considered a bad I mean, drug. No, but, but no one, Robin and John Belushi happened, everybody did coke. Yeah, but I'm saying, but nobody knew Except what really me. cocaine psychosis was. Because people basically was, people took quaaludes and just passed out. Once they made quaaludes illegal, nobody could come down from coke anymore. And these, you know... So. Now, there's a story. Let's flash ahead to them casting the Freddie Prince Jr. movie. And what you go, you, there was a movie. This is a there great a story. You told. This, this is the one where he can play himself. <laughs> yeah, there, was, I love this. there was a movie of the week. They made a movie a week. About Freddie Prince about Jr. Freddie Prince, about Not Jr., no, Freddie Prince yeah. Sr., yeah. Can yeah. you hear the laughter about three years after Freddie died? And, and there's they, a role of Alan. Yeah, so somebody, there's, a, there's a, Alan Bursky's in it. So I actually had a meeting with them about me playing me. And we got in an argument because they said, well, we don't see the character that way. And I said to them, you don't see what character that way? We don't see Alan Bur- the character of Alan Bursky that way. I said, do you, uh, you have any idea what you're talking about? This isn't a fiction thing. This is my life, part of my life here. And I took out my driver's license. I said, what does that say? Hey, Alan Bursky. And what is the character? Alan Bursky. Yeah, but we wanted something different. I went, are you crazy? Somebody taller. You know, and actually, Mike Binder. Somebody, Mike, Mike Binder Mike played Binder me. Mike Binder played you? Yeah. Another cokehead. That is so weird. Mike you want Binder. someone who doesn't sweat so much to play on <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but it was the strangest. It's one of those show business stories. I got in a fight with the producers that I wasn't right to play me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we we got into that argument for for this show. We were going to bring in Mike Binder actually to play you for yeah, this. Yeah, we were thinking about calling Mike tonight to have you. You were late. What what could we do? But I know that happened to me too with the German film company. They they the movie about three Germans coming here to to meet me in Vegas, and I they I lost the role. I didn't I didn't get to play me. <laughs> Same thing. We're in the same boat. Mm, yeah. Okay, well. In a lot of ways. We're in the same but before the whole Freddie Prince Jr. thing, I you was, were on the... Freddie Prince Jr. Freddie Prince Jr. Yeah. Freddie Prince Jr. You ever met Freddie Prince Jr.? I, last, he did I, when he was I 10 months old. I saw him when he was a, you know, an infant. I saw him again when he was about he's four so or five. He's so different now. I talked to him when he was 16, but I have not seen he's him like talk to him. He's completely since. changed. I don't like that. You know, when you yeah, meet he's someone like 38 years old and, you know, and he's married to Sarah Michelle Gellar. Oh, look, big deal. He's walking now. But before that, you... What came first? The Partridge Family or The Tonight Show? The Egg. The Tonight Show came from How did you get The Tonight Show when you were 18 years old? How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? I, I Actually, I got on The Tonight Show. I went to the comedy store. I was there the first night at the rope, right. April 10th. Because your parents were involved there, didn't they? No. No, no. No, no that, was pa that was Polly Shore. You know? no, 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 no. no. I'll see, he means, I'll say. Yeah. That was April 72. A year to the day later, a year to the day that the comedy store first opened, I did my first Tonight Show before any, all the, any of the other comics. And my friends, as you guys know, magicians or comedians, they were tearing my pictures down in the hallways, friends of mine, you know. He made David Copperfield cry. This is, this is the best thing. One story at a time. Nobody's ever made him cry. Oh, it's his birthday today. Is it really? Yes, we should today. go out with him tonight. We should call him and ask him what he's doing. I think he just got back to town. I, but, but if we were with Bursky, he's going to make him cry. And David he made David the Copperfield cry. And David How did he make never David cry? This. David's the one who told me the story. Alan Bursky made me cry. I went, what? what? David, I was... Mickey O'Malley taught my brother and I magic, a family friend, okay, who's a magician. He was also the cartoonist who did all the drawings for the Genie magazine. He was a wonderful artist. And he had this, this rabbit logo, you know, the, this bunny uh, caricature um, cartoon. And I had it on my business card. I was the only one allowed to be able to use Mickey's artwork besides Mickey O'Malley, right? I must have been 14. David must have been 12 oh. at, at Tannen's Magic Shop. <laughs> little David, little David I love this story him. already. He was David Kotkin. He was the, uh, he was the, the amazing Davino boy magician. Davino? Yeah. He should and, go back to and that. And we, he, I take out my business card. You know, we all have business cards. Now, baffling Bursky it was. And there's my bunny. Oh, and he dad. takes it. Remember, takes, this was the, the 50s, folks. This is 67, mm. 68, 69. The year I was born, 67. 67, 60, 68, I think it was. So, so he takes out his business card. And on this card, um, uh, great, amazing Davino boy magician, you know, blah, blah, blah. There is the cartoon of a Mickey O'Malley rabbit. And I said to him, what are you doing with that you know, artwork? You can't have that artwork. No one's allowed to have that but artwork. But he didn't say it like that. I said, wait, you can't. I was yelling at him, actually. Yeah, well, I was 14. 12 years old. So he's 12 years old. He goes, well, guy at Disneyland drew it for me. I said, you can't. And he starts to cry. I mean, cry. Anyway, he just now went and had the business cards made up again. The original business he cards. really? Yeah. Oh, that is a joke? And he has them, yeah. So... I called him. I called him about That's six months. I called him about six months ago. I said, "Didn't I fucking threaten you like you know, forty years ago to put that fucking business card away? This time I'm not kidding around. I'll fucking break your legs." <laughs> It's just, it must be nice to have that much money and personal assistance. So, so you can say, go make me a Mickey O'Malley card. Just so he's got the, he's got his original card up. So I have one. One, I had like three business cards left and David really wanted. I gave him one. I have one in the house somewhere. I'm going to go get my business cards made up again, the original ones. And on the back, I'm going to put rabbit logo appropriated by the amazing Davino boy well, magician. You should put the rabbit logo on a handkerchief so that when he, just, the next time you cry, you can have this hanky oh, with the rabbit there logo. You go. So that's how I met David Copperfield. David yeah, Copperfield. and he's loved you ever since. He's never forgiven Alan for that. In the back of his head... He always has I've that. Traumatized, I traumatize him. Even though you see him a lot and you're friends with him, that's why he keeps you under that leash because he wants to keep... <laughs> he's going to make you that. cry one day. One day you're going to be standing too close to the edge of a cliff and he's going to be right behind you and you're going to hear, Oh, Mally! And then, boom, off you go. That's my prediction. No more Alan. Is this true? This is the <laughs> sweetest talk show I've ever been on. I got to tell you. <laughs> Mike like, Douglas doesn't didn't didn't talk to you like this. It's called yeah. you know, Dinosaur. Oh, all but of you were. But wait, you, wait, 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 wait. We're going we're gonna to go to a clip right now. 
and show him on the Mike Douglas show with Freddie Prinze. You got to see this clip. And, and Alan was actually a heartthrob when he was a child. That's he, what I was going to say. You were on like Tiger Beat Magazine. He was magazine. on Tiger yeah, Beat yeah, Magazine. All the girls magazine. loved him. You were a teen idol. He was a hot looking kid. Yeah, okay. He was. I'd, I'd have fucked you. You'd fuck me now. Yeah, I know. But when you were kids, more appealing. Well, that's true. Yeah. So anyway, let, watch this clip of uh, Alan. He's still kind of kid-like on Mike Douglas <laughs> with Freddie Prinze, who he killed. Watch I didn't this. Wait. Watch this. Introduce your This next friend. gentleman, uh, he's been on TV before a couple of times. You may have seen him. A very funny young man. He's a good friend of mine. And he's also only 20. And... Uh, I think he's probably one of the funniest new guys around today. Would you welcome my good friend and roommate, Alan Bursky. Thank you. Where'd all the people come from? I thought this is all Philadelphia here. I've been looking for people in the hotel, the streets, couldn't find anybody. Anyway, thank you very much. This is my first time in Philly, so um, Philadelphia, Philly. Hmm. So it's, it's a big surprise. Anyway, before I really get into the stuff I want to lay on you tonight, um, there's a few things I'd like to clear up, starting with my face. Thank you. I, no, I, really, I don't mean that. That's just a technique I use to let you people know that I'm aware that I'm kind of young to be doing this sort of thing. In fact, the thing that people comment on the most after they've seen me perform, aside from the lack of humor among young people, uh, is my age. I'm 20 years old. Any, any of you remember being 20? <laughs> any of you remember being 35? What was he like uh -oh. to live with? What, any bad habits? He, well, one, he's a slob. I'm sorry, America. Freddie Prinze is a slob. <laughs> and you're, you're like... Uh... Hey, well, he's Felix Unger Jr. He's a neatness nut. <laughs> I drop an ash from a cigarette and he goes, get the sponge. <laughs> I used to follow him around with an ash train of sponge, but, you know. <laughs> I am a little fastidious. I mean, I iron my underwear. But... <laughs> <laughs> that, that is fastidious. Oh, my God. That was the best clip ever. That's the best clip ever. <laughs> You, you look so... Almost, that you was almost so, my first spit take. <laughs> yeah. So, now, you were also with John Belushi a couple days before he died. What? Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I you mean, he was is. like... I, it's, not, it's not like just coincidence. He just had really shitty no, coke. Um, I, I, had, <laughs> I had given up performing after Freddie died, and I was an agent at APA for a number of years, a major agency, then I was in a management company with uh, Rick Bernstein, Steve Binder, the director. And we were managing Tony Danza, like the last year Ooh, of Taxi. stop name dropping. Okay, the last year of Taxi. No, start name dropping. No, here, wait. So this is a weird story. Paramount had a rap party for all of their shows. It was, um, you know, Happy Days and, um, you know, the Taxi. All, all the shows were having a big party. It turned out Paramount also did, you know, the Naked Gun movies with Leslie Nielsen mm -hmm. and company? Well, that was, a, that, was a ple that was a TV show that lasted mm -hmm. like six weeks or five weeks called Police Squad. And they're funny, very funny. Now, here's the strange thing about it. Every episode of Police Squad opened with a cameo appearance of like a star as a dead body. On one show, William Shatner is on a park bench yeah, dead. I remember that, yeah. Okay? Oh, so. Belushi dies... Uh, like a Thursday morning. Thursday night, the episode of Police Squad was supposed to be a car pulls up in front of the police station. They throw a dead body out. It's Belushi. So they put a rerun on that night. He had died that morning. Wow. So he was at the rap party for, for the police Belushi squad. Was. Yeah, Belushi was. So we're hanging out, and I, and, I, and I knew John. We end up going to On the Rocks is the little private club on top of the Roxy. It's just basically a little bar. So it's me and a bunch of other celebrities and people in Belushi. John was doing so much coke. By 2.30 in the morning, he would take a shot of a vodka, a little shot glass, and he would stick his finger in it, and he would swirl it around his nose, basically like to clean out or douche his nostrils. He would then take a drinking straw from the bar, and he would pack the end with coke. He would put that end in his nostril and have me or somebody else he'd give you a hundred bucks to blow. To blow. He was doing so much well, That's coke. how you made money that day. Well, well, not only did he get a hundred bucks, but he sucked. You know, but he goes, you <laughs> could get the coke. I go, no, John, but, you know, but all the girls, the waitresses were doing it. You know what I'm saying? So 
he couldn't get. He, he was doing so much coke. It was that, ripping yeah. apart his nose. Uh, yeah, he couldn't he get it up. It closes and, up after a while. Yeah, he can't do it. Yeah. So, and I'm thinking, what the hell is keeping him awake? What is keeping him up? This was now a Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, if you know, like three in the morning. It's now like Wednesday morning. And I said, I'm going home. Uh, <laughs> after three days. Well, I said, I, I, you know I couldn't, you know. You pull back. It's good that you that pull was back. A, that was a Wednesday, like, morning. Wednesday around 6 o'clock, I walk into what is now Gelson's Market, pick up something, and I ran into some people, and they said, are you going to the Chateau Marmont for John's party? I went, Belushi's having a party? He goes, yeah. I said, no, I was at the party. What are you talking about? No, John's still partying. I said, from Monday night, from Sunday, John's still partying? I didn't know he was, you know, I didn't know what speedballing was or anything. I didn't know, you know. So I don't know what speedballing oh, is these now. Kids. What, these. what is speedballing? When I was a boy, speedballing. I, I don't know. Heroin, heroin what, and cocaine mixture. Heroin and, hypoder- and cocaine mixture. And a hypodermic needle. Deadly. Because so this is, now, this is now Wednesday night. And I, and I said, I, no, I'm not going. I'm going home. I'm sick. I'm going home to throw up and go to bed. Like so normal. That, yeah. So that was Wednesday night. Thursday morning, he, he, he was dead. Speedball. And one wakes you up, one puts so you to I was, sleep, I was, and when they hit. I was with him 48 hours before he died. Well, the girl, the nurse that was with uh, him when he died, or administered the fatal dose. No, it wasn't a nurse. It was, it was a, a girl. Uh, yeah, Kathy, Kathy Smith, Evelyn that Smith. That song, and Sundown, by Gordon Lightfoot's about her. Sundown, you better beware. There was a very, funny, sundown is, was there was a very funny joke. At the strange thing, when John died within... Is that about John Belushi's death, Sundown? Is that no, it's about, about that girl about who that was girl. stalking Gordon she, Lightfoot. And she, then he wrote that song about her. She was a well-known... She was a well-known stalker. like groupie coke dealer. Yeah. About a month after Belushi died, there was a strange story in, in the paper. Somebody had thrown out of an airplane like a pound of cocaine or something, that, you know, as they were being chased by the cops in the forest. And a bear found this... Coke, this bundle, and he ate it. And that's the only time Alan went hunting. <laughs> and, and, you know, the bear, the bear ate this Coke and died. It was all over the news. You know, this, they found this grizzly on his back like this with all this Coke all over him. So somebody... <laughs> but, uh, first, he had built a terrific log cabin. <laughs> but somebody had a joke. They said they weren't sure, but they, they think they saw Kathy Evelyn Smith drive away. Ah. Uh. And that was the joke at the time. But some poor, stupid grizzly. Can you stupid. imagine? He found a pound of coke. Yeah, but he's going, well, why can't I hibernate? <laughs> <laughs> and they, it was all over the news. And it was literally within weeks of, like, Belushi's death. And the joke was Kathy Evelyn Smith got to, got to the bear or something. Oh, Big Ben. Big Ben. They, they, they t- taped all the episodes in one day of Big Ben. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you imagine some, some grizzly... <laughs> So yeah, just sitting there eating this thing. He won't stop chasing me. This fucking bear. <laughs> Two hunters. You're not out here to hunt, are you? <laughs> hey, you wanna wanna go ch- get some salmon? No, no. I'm the moose that had to put hungry. the straw in his nose and blow, though. That was the. Yeah, I'm not hungry. No salmon for me today. <laughs> so, so okay. Tell us. Uh, now no, see, let's play a game. Let's play a game. I'm gonna name a celebrity. You tell me a story about that celebrity that that. That I yeah, there's got there's like seven degrees of separation. Only there's like one degree with Alan of separation. All right, Michael Douglas. Ever anything? Michael Douglas who? Michael Douglas the actor. Uh, I think my ex-wife might have had an affair with. Who him. was your ex-wife? I read something online today about your ex-wife used to. She also married somebody famous. I married James Conn's second That's wife, right. Elvis James Presley's Conn. girlfriend. I was married to. She left Elvis for Jimmy Conn. And then uh, she married me. Scott Kahn's mother, Sheila Ryan Kahn, Bursky, whatever her name is. She was. left James Kahn and married you? No, she was long divorced from Jimmy Kahn after that. So who married her first? I'm confused. She, Jimmy, Elvis' Jimmy, girlfriend first. She was Elvis' girlfriend first. She left Elvis for James Kahn. And then left Had him. a kid with Jimmy Kahn, Scott Kahn, the actor. Yeah. And oh, you they, were Scott Kahn, so you were... Like stepfather. Uh-huh. So, uh, for a little bit. So, Sheila... Years later, you know, they got divorced a long time. Was she a hottie? She must have been hot. Oh, yeah. She was, Warren Beatty chased her. When I met her, you know, she, Warren Beatty was dating her. How long were you married to her for? 102 weeks. You must have loved her if you're counting the weeks. I got, I said, you know, it wasn't a marriage. It was a date that got out of, that got out of control. And I said, I got to learn to take the first hundred no's. Did she clean you out for money wise? No, no, no. Just, I just gave it to her and stuff. But she, it was just, a, it was just a disaster. 
she was. I don't want to talk about it. And she just passed you, away. You must not want to talk about it because you've never brought this up ever that you were even no, married before. She, well, you know, I mean, it was just this strange thing. Do you meet her, you meet her with me? Mm -mm, was, no. Uh, was it love? <laughs> She was. Uh, she was. She just died last year of cancer. Actually. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for bringing that down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's new? What What did you have to do with Richard Pryor's death? Anything? Strangely enough. <laughs> You're kidding. You're kidding. I just. No, no he knew like, Richard Pryor. He knew Richard well. very well. I was on his show. Richard, when mm -hmm. I was a kid, going to open mic nights and stuff, and Richard would be at, little, yeah, at the little club or the comedy store. You know, he was great with the young comics hanging around and stuff like that. He'd invite them up to his up to his house every night. That's yeah, what Gallagher said. Well, yeah, but I, I mean, I was already doing Tonight Shows and stuff by then, but like Flip Wilson would invite, you know, Flip Wilson used to take you out to breakfast and give you 500 bucks, you know, in the beginning of the comedy store the first year or two, you know. He wrote Here Comes, Here Comes the Judge. You wrote Here Comes the Judge? No. Really? No. Anyway, um, Richard, I'll say Richard Pryor's story. Um, it was, Richard was about to go do, this is how big of a star he was, Superman 3, Okay. Uh, it was the night before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Eve. I think it was 82. What, we just heard that Natalie Wood died. And Richard, Were you involved in that death? Uh, I'll no. tell you after this. Okay. No. So we were at someone's house who was known as the Coke dealer. She was a Coke dealer, not this other woman. You'd go to her house and all these celebrities and stars would be there. You know, everybody for years. Who was it? A girl? That yeah. Her deal? Who? Is that an actress? No, we, she we was. Know her name? She, yeah, you, you know, she was Marty Cohen's girlfriend, then Biff Maynard's girlfriend. Anyway, it's a long story. All right. So anyway, the point is, Richard Pryor's over there, and we're getting you know, high all night long, right? Hardy, Hardy, Marty. Yeah. So this was now. Richard's going to drive me home. The sun is almost coming up. It's going to be Thanksgiving morning. I think it was '82, right? We're in this part of Hollywood. He's got this brand new Rolls Royce. And I'm sitting in the rolls with him, and we've been at this place like, you know, for 18 hours getting high and drinking and, and doing blood and coke. Thanksgiving. Normal yeah. Thanksgiving. Well, the night before Thanksgiving. But, you know, Richard was this, you know, a superstar. You couldn't be a bigger movie star at that time, you know. So I, I look at him and I said, you know, Richard, it's not that I'm complaining in my idol. You know, I love you. But, you know, you could be anywhere in the world right now with anyone in the world. And well, you're in Hollywood, in this part of Hollywood, downtown Hollywood, those that, you know. And you're with me. Not that I'm complaining. You're trying to get him to shoot himself, too? No, so he's playing with this little vial and the coke, and he's doing bumps. And he's not saying anything. And he's just doing bumps. And he's giving me a few bumps. And, you know, he's... I said, R Richard. And he looks at me. And this is the last time. He looks at me and he says, I got the demon. And I got the what? I got the demon. Well, no shit. Yeah, but that was, you know. You just realized that? But I'm just saying, it was, you know. And he died. The last time I saw Richard, he was in the back of the comedy store. It was a big party for, you know, when they had those comedy awards, George Slaughter. And he was in a wheelchair. He I couldn't, mean, he couldn't right. talk. He was a shaky demon. He was like this. Like, like, like that, I started to cry, you know, because he couldn't talk. He had MS. It was like, it really had gotten to him, like where he, he get hit, hit, like, you know, uh, you, you wish you would I know what you're saying. You got the demon, right? I understand, Richard. That's what you said. That was the last time I saw Richard alive. Mm. But before that, you know, it was the last time I... We, he, did, he did a TV series. We, all, we were all on his show, the Richard Pryor show. It was supposed to be a regular series. And he walked off after four episodes. He told NBC to go fuck themselves. George so Carlin. Good. What? George Carlin. Yeah, what did you have to do with his death? No, nothing, but again, well, you must have a story. I'm just yelling out celebrities to see if you knew. You knew. When I was a kid, you know, I, I, you know, George Carlin, before he had AM, FM radio, right? I would go around to these comedy clubs or see comics, you know. When I was 15, I went to the Copacabana. I cut school, and I knocked on the dressing room door to meet Marvin Braverman, was the opening act for Jack Jones, and I met Larry Wilde, and I told him I wanted to be a comedian. And these guys were always very nice. I was 15, you know? And Larry Jack Wilde. Jones is a tie-in to Shirley Larry. Jones and the Partridge family. You see how it's all coming no, around. What are you crazy? Jack Jones and Shirley Jones have nothing to do with you. Yes, they did. Jack Jones is married to she, Shirley, Shirley Jones. Jones. Jack Cassidy. Oh. oh fuck. <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> morons. <laughs> we are morons. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, my, my right, Partridge so Family trivia was off. You're going up, you did Carson, you're doing, after Carson, what's, what, 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 
big things did you do after you got one? What, what Partridge family called Dean Martin, everything, everybody, you know? I mean, the, literally the next day I had like a quarter of a million dollars worth of work. It was unbelievable. A, a and worker then, coke. Did you start doing coke then or did, were you I, doing coke? I, no, I didn't do, I never saw, even saw cocaine. The night Freddie Prinze moved in with me. He comes in from the airport. It was the first week of December, 73. Never even seen coke. He had, you know, he had a top coat. It was like a pea coat, you know, those wool pea coats. But he had the long one that went down to his yeah, own pester dress like a prince. You know, we had those, you know. So anyway, the point is, that was his top coat he was wearing. It was pouring rain, and it was soaking wet. And you know how wool smells when it's wet. And Freddie was like 6'2". He was, you know, really, you know, people realize how big he was. So I'm, I'm trying to get this coat off of him to hang it in the bathroom because it stinks, you know. I'm a neat freak. He knew that coke in it. He like, Give me that so, coat. Let me have that coat. He says to me. He says to me, this was like December 2nd or 3rd, 1973. He says to me, do you have a mirror and a blade? And I said, well, I use an electric shaver. I thought he wanted to shave. Oh. <laughs> I thought he wanted to shave. And we're idiots. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, it was 1973. I was 18 years old. So he takes out of his pocket this wax paper with rubber bands. And in the wax paper, wax paper. was, was tinfoil. And in the tin foil was more. Was wax, your card? Was more. Was wax, the card that you chose the day wax, before? More wax paper wrapped up, and then there was, he opened this, this bundle up, and there was this white kind of looked like crushed sugar cubes in those days. You know, there's all this white powder, and he said, "I need a mirror and a blade." To, and I said, "Well, I, I have an exacto knife." And he took a picture. He actually it was the Woody Allen framed picture I had on the wall. He took that down, and he uh, uh, put the coke on the picture of glass. And he starts chopping that up. And you knew Woody Allen, too, by the way, just, well, just for well, the paper. But, so I'm looking at this, and I'm going, what's, what's that? He goes, cocaine. And I said, oh, that's cocaine. He goes, you've never tried cocaine like that. I've never seen it. He gives me a bump. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I wish I never fucking saw mm. the shit. That night, not only did I clean the apartment, I polished the air conditioning grill. With his tongue. I took apart the air conditioning to clean it and polish every piece. And because it was talking to you. And that was, well, that was, yeah. <laughs> Which is ironic, and this is the truth. You're going to think I'm joking. I probably shouldn't tell this. The only person that's ever actually offered me cocaine. When did he offer you cocaine? He's never offered me cocaine in all the years I've known. Years ago at the Magic Castle. <laughs> hey, I, I've never done drugs. I've never had coke at the drink. Magic Castle. No, never had the thing. You can't bring coke to the Magic Castle. Never, we've never had coke at the Magic That's Castle. against the laws of the castle. Did I say Magic Castle? It was someplace other than that. He said Tragic Castle. Tragic Castle. Yeah. It was a Tragic Castle. You know, in those days... I, but it was the only time, and you, I, I felt like I was in Studio 54. I've never, done, I've never done castle. drugs. I've never done anything. You know, in those days, you know, seriously, in those days, you used to go up to the agencies, people's offices and stuff, and, you know, they would do it like offering. Yeah, you right. Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, they would pay you. Comedy clubs would actually pay you. You, you know, back really? yeah. the first few years of Saturday Night Live, cocaine and drugs and quaaludes were all over the table. People, you know. Then everywhere. John Belushi died, and everybody went. The minute Belushi died, that's when things. everybody went. This is bad. Yeah. This might be a bad thing. Because that's what shocked even Robin Williams, wasn't well, it? Robin wasn't was it? there with him before he died. Mm -hmm. He was there the night, and so was De Niro. Robin and De Niro came over to visit him hours before he died. That didn't come out a lot later, after he died. But uh, yeah. But everybody, you know, everybody I mean, did. It was it was like you know. It's so like weird that. that I I could resist all that those temptations back in those days. <laughs> I wasn't like everybody else. Well, the thing is, actually, it's strange that somebody has this theory that when when they stopped making quaaludes, you know, people the drug was you know cocaine and quaaludes. Yeah, was, it used to get really high. You pop a lewd and you would come down. When quaaludes were, you know, when they didn't make them anymore, when they stopped making quaaludes, nobody could ever come down from this shit anymore. And yeah. then, you know... Then other stuff came along. But quaaludes were good. Well, you know, because well, as you were coming down, you fucked everybody in the room. That was the beautiful part about a quaalude. I'm glad I was in the room with you. <laughs> I'm not sure. but and it, it affects your memory, too, apparently. <laughs> Okay, what can I, I'm, I'm gonna bring up the names because I don't know this story. You told me about Elaine Boozler. What's the connection with Elaine? Yeah, Boozler? well, when he turned super agent from comedian to super agent, he latched on to Elaine, and you guys fucking went out and made some cash, huh? We, uh, we, I was booking Elaine, and uh, you know, I was the opening act, the road manager, and the agent. 
And she was kind of a new age of. I mean, there was Phyllis was Diller Phyllis and there Bay. was no, Joan but, but no, but Rivers, making, but she was like she kind of the new li- sexy. Yeah, but no, she was, she's a great comic. And we were. Oh, I didn't say she wasn't. We but were she good was family friends. Gr- groundbreaking. You know, we were just good friends. You know, my mother is like a second mother to Elaine Boozer. We've always oh, been very close. You guys weren't like you didn't you weren't you didn't like her like. No, we never had. No, we never. But you liked her though. No, we're, she's like a sister. We're like ah, yeah, but you fucked your sister. So what's that say? But you like what is the matter with you? How do you not you? like? <laughs> what? What is the matter with you me? Know, I never fucked my sister. I don't have a sister. Not anymore. Elaine is like a sister, and no, I've never been in re- involved. Did you kill your sister? I mean, two of you sick bastards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> you should see this one on a cruise ship. Wearing his pink pants. I can't pants. see him on anything yeah. but on cruise ships. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we. That's how we. You know, you saw me at the Magic Castle a few weeks before we worked. A few days just, before we yeah. worked at, on the cruise ship. Did you said to the person next to you? You remember this story? No. You you told the person next to you because I was doing rabbi out of a hat and cut, killing my grandmother. Uh, you know, the cut and restored IV. You said this act will never be on a cruise ship, and the. Two days later, we were on a cruise but ship. But it wasn't together. the same act, was it? No. no. That's, well, see, that's what's right. This, so, so. Yeah, you we were worked. Doing, Alan and I have worked. Yeah, you yeah. Were, worked, doing, worked you were cruise doing ships for years. The, Holland America. Uh, what was he? He He's had this. Telling an old lady. He had this bit. This he had a funny bit. There was this funny one. No, but I mean, I but this is there was this bit I always remembered about. He was calling bingo, <laughs> and. How'd that go? B9? Yeah, I had, I had, for a while, I had Robert Bax, before he lost the weight, dressed as a nun in the audience, and my my show would get heckled by nuns in the audience, and I would be singing singing a song that was interrupted by a bingo game. Bewitched bothered him to be seven. Yeah, I did and, some weird and shit. And it was, you know, I forgot. He took a couple of my weird bits, too. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> he took the good man. You know the snowstorm illusion? No, 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 you know that was the you one the I came storm. up with. No. That was my bit, the, the, the thing. The, the, the ashes. I gave it to you. I'm gonna no, no, no. go get a donut or something. <laughs> no, the what you gave me was the great ventriloquist. No, I gave you the ashes too. The ashes bit. Okay. You guys spend morning, noon, and night with each other, and you're just getting into no. the spend. We time we hang out is when we do this show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we hate it. Well, if you'd say something interesting, Alan, we'd yeah. well, I didn't know you guys were going to be blasting each other. We thought you were going to be like really hot. Big, talking about how you killed everybody and you're fucking I didn't kill. downer. No, she downer. Was, and then I killed this guy. See, like, the thing is, I was so young starting out. And in those days, you know, people hung out at Schwab's and the coffee shops and Cantor's. They all Jews. I was in I was in an acting class, Milton Kutselis, and in my acting class was Cheryl Ladd and Tom Selleck and a lot of a lot of people like that. Henry Winkler literally at the height of the fonts lived exactly across the street from me. Was he a drug addict no, too? No. no, because he doesn't seem like a drug addict. No, no uh, Henry Winkler lived right across the street from me, so we were friends with him. You're a drug addict. You know, so you you know you you know you know you, you got to know people. Yeah, you don't you don't skyrocket when you do. It was a very different, you know, you used to come to Las Vegas, you know. I opened, you know, for Sandler and Young and, 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 and all these other... I have no whatever. idea who that is. You know who Sandler and Young were? Not a clue. They were, a, they were a singing team who headlined. They were big, big stars. And they had like Stephen Eady. Yeah, but anyway, they were big stars in the 60s, 70s, and one's still alive, one died. Point is, you used, to come, here, you used to come here and see your name on that marquee with these stars. You know, when they, it wasn't like prime rib, and then like, well, you, you know, two guys. you used to see your name and, up there, but you, mm-hmm. it wasn't, but you used to see it. You know, <laughs> you, so, yeah. so stoned. You know, it was just the marquee, you know? It didn't say prime rib and a thousand other shows. And you know, when you got to town, Remember you know. when you changed your name to prime rib and you were, out, you were on every marquee in Vegas? <laughs> when, <laughs> when and you got to town, you know, you played these rooms, you know, there were like, you know, 14 hotels yeah, and 14 like shows. That was it. And you, you get a phone call saying, you know, Elvis Presley's having a party tonight. You Elvis know, Presley. You... Did you, you spend any time with Elvis? I met him once. You met Elvis Presley once? Yeah. Time. Sinatra? I met Sinatra a couple times because... Uh, of... Dean Martin? Yeah. Sammy Davis Jr.? Yeah. Wow. Dean All Martin this. was a great guy. Sinatra, you know, was like an meeting the pole. Like, but for, but for Dean Martin... Senior Wences. Actually, yeah, yeah. Yes. You really did? Yeah, because she was, it was the girl. You know, They're lying. No, Senior Wentz is because HBO, Marty Klein, okay. Marty Klein, the first HBO specials in those days were those comedy specials, oh. and they had Senior Wentz's on, and that was a Marty Klein package for APA, so I was involved with that. Wow. With yeah, Bob Williams and Louie, we were on that show. People don't know Great comedy. Senior Wences. That's Senior Wentz's, by the way. All right, all right. Yeah, the guy he did more in show. two shows. dots here. And going to, on to, and he was huge, and that's all he Johnny, was. Johnny, you okay? Easy for you. Anyway, the point is, 
you got to, you know, when you came to Las Vegas, you know, there were these stars and everybody. Senior wins us now. Hi, I'm so old. <laughs> They were the star, you know, you, you know, I worked Miami Beach. There were ho those hotels, the Diplomat, the Doville, the Eden Rock, the Fountain. Exactly. It was so bad, the tide would come in and uh, never go, they would uh, go out and it would never come every back. Every one of those major hotels had a big star, you know, it was Stephen Eady in a comic or it was Alan King and a singer, you know, and it was, you know, the whole thing, the Puerto Rico, all of that's gone. Yeah. You know, not, not just the hotels with the shows, but the nightclubs, you know, the Copacabana, the Latin, you know, Quarter, you know, the, uh, the, the Latin Casino in Philadelphia. Thank God, they just smell bad. Okay. Was Johnny Carson nice to you? Johnny Carson was, was, was cordial. Johnny Carson was not a nice guy. He was a very cold, aloof man. See, I hate hearing that. Well, everybody says that. What do you mean, hey, dude? Was it somebody going to say, yeah, he was warm. He used to come over and pal around. He's everybody says the same thing about Carson. No, he was not. He was, he was always a... Uh, he was a private person, man. It's like Steve Martin. He, he's private. You know, when, 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 you, when he died... Uh, Steve I Martin remember, died? No, Johnny Carson died. I remember Alan, uh, Larry King. Were you King. there? I remember Larry King asking Ed McMahon about Johnny. And even Ed McMahon said, well, you know, Johnny really didn't have close friends. You don't really get, you know... He, uh, That's one of the great Alan Bursky quotes. <laughs> I, said, I, I can't remember who we were talking about. I go, are you friends with him? Uh, I think it was uh, Bud Freeman. I said, are you friends with Bud Freeman? He goes, Bruce, I don't have friends. I have people that return my phone calls and people who don't. <laughs> that was an Alan Bursky quote. <laughs> is that me? <laughs> that was you. No, I always that. said there's only two kinds of people in the world, those that can get me bookings and those that can't. <laughs> there's a lot more that can't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Where are you? laughs> How did you find out about the ones that, that can because all, all the people well, he's been your. He's that's why he's been your opening act. The show frequently. business is gone. You know, it's all gone. I mean, look, you know, it's not all gone. It's, I mean, that kind around. of show business is. You know, there's no middle class like that anymore. You know. So, Alan, you are the great rise and fall. <laughs> you are the great, and then been, and, and then know. rise up a little bit. <laughs> There've been, you know, there've been other guys who came and went. And yeah, what was your greatest moment? You what what do you feel went? was your greatest you, pride moment? Was it the Tonight Show when you were that, or? Well, you know, you know, I mean, when you first got to that, you know, at 18 years old, before all these, I auditioned for the Tonight Show. There must have been 20 comics that I knew that night, you know, who we were always going to the, you know, clubs with, open mic nights, and in those days, they held the audience after the Tonight Show, and you literally, you know, did the audition in front of this Tonight Show audience. And it was Who all was booking the Tonight Show, Jim? Who? No, Jim McCauley didn't even work for NBC at that time. Oh, really? Craig Tennis and uh, Craig Tennis, basically. Remember when you made Lincoln laugh, Abraham Lincoln, so, right before he got killed? So, all these guys are saying to me, "Don't worry if you don't get on. Don't worry, kid. You know, uh, Joan Rivers auditioned like nine times. I went on like I was like fifth on, blew the roof off the place. I was the only act that got on out of all those guys. Drove them all crazy." Are you friends with David Brenner? I, 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 <laughs> I know what you're going. I don't know. We, Great we have his, we sometimes, David Brenner helped me put together, you know, rearrange a couple of jokes on my first Tonight Show. He was right. at my parents' house the night we had a party, the night I was on the Tonight Show to watch the show. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes up and down with David, you know? You have a David Brenner, Alan Bursky story, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah, David told me the greatest Alan Bursky story. <laughs> They tell me millions of them. I don't think, I think David has more Alan Bursky stories than anybody. You know, when I was a kid, you know, and I wanted to be a comic, I was 15, 16, I took a little Woody Allen stuff, David Brenner material, and I was going around open mic nights. That's what, you know, you do to learn. I was 16, David Brenner was 36, he threatened to beat me up because I was doing some of his material. And then, and then the ego that he turned around and did the same shit to David Copperfield for that logo. See how it comes around? Yeah. That's karma. Uh, yeah. Karma. Okay. Well, but but tell the tell 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 your David Brenner well, story. I, I, it's not a good one. It's not oh no, we won't tell it. We don't, tell it. We well, don't want it, like, because we're not here to put Alan. To, we don't want no. to, to do anything mean. No. Let's just say if David Brenner was sitting where you're you're sitting, you'd be beat up. <laughs> I don't think so. He's seventy-seven years old. Yeah, maybe. I, mean, I, I think yeah. I can. I think I can. Is David seventy-seven years yeah. old? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. He's in good shape though. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I just I saw a picture of him. Oh, he looks, no, he's looks like a shape. fucking raisin. He's got more liver spots on him than than a Dalmatian. Have you tasted them? They don't taste like liver. No, but I mean, but I mean, I saw. I haven't seen David in years and years and David's years. In good I haven't shape. seen David. He's a, he's a really nice guy. Years. He's a great guy. We will never say a bad thing about David Brenner. Alan, we come mm. and go, but uh, we loved having you on. We wanted to have you on. This, you, you're probably <laughs> no, seriously. We wanted to have you on more than any other guest because you have more 
Well, you have the best well, stories of all. But you could take a punch. You lived, could take you, a punch. You lived the life, and you can take a punch, and you can give a punch. Yep. And considering the, the biggest guest before me was Penny Wiggins, so uh, and don't know her. and yeah. would Alan is somebody that I mean because we we adore Alan, and you'd give yeah. you'd give somebody the shirt off their back if if, if they need Alan yeah. is, is, yeah. is that, <laughs> and you could oh. still. If still, you ever need a favor, you just hesitate to call Alan. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, you know, I, I think my name's before Kipadadas. Who's that? Uh, never mind. Showing your age. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell us a joke before we go. A joke? Tell us your best joke that was like. A I'll TV tell you joke. a joke that tell was on my first there was one that Everybody, yeah. that is, everyone is ripped off or switched it around. And it was, it's my joke. It's called, nice. This is called karma. Okay, it's my joke. Was that, you know, I did this thing about, you know, my family moved to, to, to Los Angeles from New York. And the, 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 the routine in there was, it's my walk. Ah, oh, Jesus. No. Right. The routine was, you know, my, you know, thought we were going to move to Santa Monica because my so parents, cool. you know, wanted to move near the beach. Anyway, and the point was, you know, I hate the beach. And I don't relate to it. I, I tried. I even went out and I bought one of those tight-fitting bathing suits like the bodybuilders wear. You know the kind that make the guy look like he's trying to smuggle a bunch of grapes into the country? <laughs> and he's not doing Carson fell over, spit up at that joke. You joke. That joke what was been, the punchline? You know, I bought a, the bathing suits like the bodybuilders wear. You know the kind. They make the guy look like he's trying to smuggle a bunch of grapes into the country. That joke has been ripped off in the last, you know, 40 years. Wow. <laughs> I got it now. I had a glass of water. I got We linked it, then I ran out of water. It was going to be a double spit take. Damn it. I think Is there done. a hazmat team here? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alan Burst. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah.